Hey, good evening, everybody. Dan here, Ultimate Boston Red Sox Collector page on Facebook, uh, celebrating my 450th like on Facebook. Uh, I think I'm still stuck at 16 subscribers on my YouTube videos. Um, I know that my content isn't for everybody, um, but I am trying to uh, post some videos. I've been absent for a few days, uh, hadn't been feeling all that well, been getting some migraines, and uh, had one today. Started with another one a few hours ago, but took some medicine, feeling better, so hoping to get a good night's sleep tonight and uh, sleep it off. But uh, yeah, just coming at you with another video tonight. Um, my focus lately has been on my side collection, my Hall of Fame collection. I did receive a 500 count package uh, in the mail today that I was ultimately very disappointed with. Um, granted, it was a bo two boxes of nothing but Hall of Fame cards with very limited duplication, about 15 duplicates out of the whole thing. Had about 35 to 40 insert cards uh, from various years. Uh, but what really bothered me about it is when I went through the cards, I was like, as I started getting towards the end, I'm like, geez, I haven't seen any of the cards that were in the picture. Uh, the seller had several lots that he sold over the past several months and just used a stock photo. And I didn't get any of the cards that were in the picture. And unfortunately, the picture and the description says you'll get cards of Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Ty Cobb, DiMaggio, Mantle, Clemente, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays. I may have said those already. But what I got was a whole bunch of Bruce Souter, Raleigh Fingers, uh, Ozzy Smith, um, Trevor Hoffman, a lot of the newer, Phil Necro, um, a lot of the guys that uh, newer Hall of Famers, Alan Trammell, a lot of basically common cards that you can still buy as commons, even though they're Hall of Famers. And yes, do I want those cards? Yes. Am I happy to have those cards? Yes. But I paid, I paid $37 with shipping for 500 cards. Less than eight cents a card. I'm thrilled with that. I'm thrilled. I've been buying them on sport lots for 18 cents a card on the average and about 21 to 22 cents when you factor in shipping. So to get them for eight cents a card, I'm thrilled. But with the seller totally misrepresented the lots, nowhere in it in his description did it say you are not receiving necessarily the cards that are pictured. Um, he specifically put those names in the description and I literally did not get one card of any of those guys. So I wrote him right away when I finished going through them and I said, look, this is... Uh, I feel like you misrepresented yourself and I feel like you need to either change your description if you're still selling these lots and change your photographs. And, and I said, I'm assuming you bundled all these cards up prior and uh, this was like the last one you had. And, you know, um, the condition was good. Um, again, they're all Hall of Famers. So he he delivered what, you know, the kind of what the description said. But overall, I was disappointed. Um I'm still in the process of entering those cards. I got a bunch of them entered early. Um, I'm entering them in Trading Card Database. I'm using that instead of doing my own spreadsheet, which I like because it, it when you click on the in your collection and you click on the stats, it actually gives you a listing of how many cards you have of each player and it ranks them. So it's kind of fun. I'm, I'm a stats guy. I like that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm kind of a dork like that. Be like, oh, okay, number one tonight is so-and-so and number, you know, he moved up from number six to number four with this lot that I purchased. And I'm kind of a, kind of a geek like that. A lot of us that do this are. Uh, if you don't think you are, you might want to think about it a little more because we're all kind of nerdy in that way. Um, and I'm not ashamed of it. It's my hobby. It's my passion. So this is kind of taking over my, my collecting right now. I haven't really gotten much for Red Sox lately. Um, I The only thing I did get, and I'll show this right now, is the 2020 Topps uh, Mookie Betts tin. Uh, this is kind of a cool item. It's just the tin that I think either one pack or a couple packs or a bundle of cards came in. Um, I didn't, the cards did not come with it. I didn't want the cards. I paid 50 cents for the tin and it was 450 for the shipping. Um, so I paid five bucks for it. I was happy with that. That's the cheapest one I've been able to find. I had checked at my local Walmart when I'd been there, which isn't very often. Um, and God bless my wife for doing all that shopping and things right now because I had to go to our local dollar store uh, in the last week and I was in there 15 minutes with a mask on and I was so uncomfortable and just so irritated. Uh, I don't do well with with society, if you will. Um, there's some really 
ignorant people out there in the world and i'm sure everybody has their fair share of those people in their neighborhoods too but uh yeah it, it drove me nuts and i'm i'm gonna make as few trips into those places as i have to right now so um on another good note my local card store has been advertising a lot on facebook they're more of a jewelry and coin store but they do cards and they're really the only card store in like a 40 50 mile radius of where i live um and they are doing uh you can call in orders and pick stuff up so right now what i need is i get mostly supplies from them when i do buy wax i get it from them but it's you know usually i buy tops i buy heritage or gypsy queen or something like that uh, but i need some binders and pages for this hall of fame endeavor so i may be calling them later this week to try to pick up some stuff so um yeah so the hall of fame collection is coming along nicely um i've entered so far about almost 800 and I have right around 200 more to go. It's going to be really, really close to a thousand different cards in my collection already. And I literally just started getting cards beginning of last week. So um, I really have gone into it full steam. Um, again, I'm not buying graded cards. I'm not buying rookie cards. I'm not, my budget doesn't allow for that. Now, what I've spent so far, could I have picked up a couple of nice, could I have picked up several probably vintage cards Hall of Fame cards that are PSA graded, you know, mid grades. Sure, I probably could have, um, but uh, that's not where I'm at right now. I do look, I'm looking for really good deals, but the card market is just booming right now. I mean, I haven't seen the card market boom like this in years. And I, I, do I think it's just temporary? Probably, I think a lot of people right now are have a little bit, the people that are still working and haven't been affected financially by all of this, I think have a little bit of extra money right now because they're not able to go places and do things that they normally do. So I think they're maybe getting collecting fever if they've got collections sitting in their closets or in their basements or in their attics and they're digging them out and saying, hey, I want to get back into this. This is a lot of fun. And uh, people I think are saying, hey, I want to collect again. And I, that's why I've started doing this. I've totally gotten the collecting bug again. And my Red Sox collection, as great as it is and as fun as it is, sometimes it gets a little, you know, oh, geez, I feel like I feel like doing something else. Uh, I've been looking at some collections that people have been selling on local Facebook selling pages. Um, there's one in my hometown that uh, it's a bunch of small sets, traded and rookie sets from the mid 80s. Uh, they've got the 86 Tops Flare Update, Tarnus Rookies, 87, 88, and 89 sets. They've got a lot of oddball sets that I know would produce a lot of Hall of Famers for me. I'm not really interested in keeping all the other cards, so uh, they just dropped the price by 20%, and I'm hoping that nobody bites on it because it's still about double what I'd be willing to pay for it. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that they'll come down a little bit more, and I might pull the trigger on that if uh, if it stays available um, and, and see what, what might be in there because I, I do want to get back into getting some graded cards. I used to have several when I collected before I had done a submission. I had actually used Beckett back then. I would definitely go with PSA this time, but um, I'd like to buy them already slabbed. Um, I think it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. Um, if you're buying high, high end, definitely not the case. And especially right now, I was just watching uh, Mike baseball collectors video where he was showing some, some of the slabs that he's bought over the past, you know, last anywhere from a couple weeks to six months that have doubled, tripled, quadrupled in price, uh, just overnight. And I think right now, if, if my opinion, I don't think this is going to last. I think it's, I think it's, um, it's great for people who are selling right now, who, who are investing. Um, but I think it's I, it's not the market for somebody like myself who's trying to get into it on the ground level and trying to get some stuff. Um, I think that uh, I'm always a bargain shopper, and that's why I've been doing the lesser, um, lesser priced cards of Hall of Famers. I think that you can get great looking cards. And just let me just pull a card out of here, just for example. Um, you know, just something simple like this: a 2012 Topps Gold Standard Coward Jr. I mean, 18 cents. You know, I don't know what the book value is on it, but right now what I've entered, I'm averaging around a dollar a card according to Trading Card Database as far as their values. Again, I don't really place much in the value of the cards, uh, but it is kind of fun to see. And I'm, I'm, I like more of the listings of the players individually. You can show the stats in your collection and see how many cards you have of this player and this player and, and rank them. It also gives you an opportunity to see how many different players that you've been able to uh, accumulate. And um, What's funny about it is any multiplayer cards, like let me just find one real quick, like this card right here. It's going to show that I have a, a Qingming Wang 
card in my Hall of Fame collection because he's featured on this then and now Heritage card from 2006 with Warren Spawn. So it's going to show him as a card in my collection, which is going to, which that I don't like, but what can you do? I mean, I think overall, does it take time to search? Does it take time to update? Does it take time to add? Does it take time to search? Yes, it takes time to do that. Could I type that in on a spreadsheet quicker? Probably. But I would probably get a lot of the, um, the descriptions wouldn't be as good and I wouldn't have the values either. So I'm really liking the trading card database. And one day, you know, when I'm really, really bored, I might start maybe trying to put my Red Sox collection on there because I like how you can do the want lists off there and things like that. And it gives you good stats. It would tell me immediately how many cards I have of Kyle Yastrzemski or Ted Williams or David Ortiz. And uh, I like that part of it. I have to do more advanced searches on my on my spreadsheets that I have right now. But not anytime soon. I will not be taking on that endeavor anytime soon, With not with 27,000 different cards of Red Sox. Uh, that's why I'm going to try to do the Hall of Famers. I've already started slowing down on buying the Hall of Famers. I did place an order through Sport Lots for roughly 100 cards. Uh, I put it, used the box shipping feature on there. I've never used that before because I'm simply too impatient, but now I don't really need to be, there's no rush. And I saved just on the order that I placed, I saved, I want to say it was 625 regular and 250 box shipping. So I got for 375, I saved. So I figure I got 20 cards for free on that order. Now, if I do that 10 times a year, that's 200 cards that I would get free. So uh, that that to me is what I like to see. I like to see bargains. So, And I'm in no hurry for it at this point. I'm still playing catch up, uh, getting all these entered. I'm trying to stay on top of it. And then I'm going to start putting them in. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm doing top loaders for the insert cards. Um, I've got a ton of them from my Red Sox collection when I emptied out all my vintage cards and put them in binders and my insert cards. I have a couple thousand of them. So that's definitely gonna hold me for a while. The other cards for right now, um, I'm just leaving them as they come. Some of the sellers sleeve them, some of them don't. I'm leaving them as they are. And as I get pages, I will work them into binders. I really, I know it would be a lot cheaper to just do penny sleeves and put them in 1600 count boxes or 3200 count boxes, but, I really like the fact if I can get them in a binder and then just be able to take them out and look at them when I want to look at them. And then if I ever do change my mind and get out of it and want to sell them, I can picture them a lot easier and uh, it'll just be a more attractive looking collection. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, like I said, I'll be close to a thousand um, and I do have, like I said, another hundred coming. I just want a couple lots on eBay. Um, I was doing a video before, but I had five auctions that ended in a matter of 10 minutes and I kept getting outbid at the last second. So it happened three times while I was doing the video that I was going to do instead of this one, and I had to stop it because I was getting frustrated. Um, so uh, I did lose out on a couple lots, but I picked up a couple of numbered, serial numbered card lots of, uh, what was it, Christy Mathewson and Johnny Bench. I lost out on the Gehrig and Reggie Jackson at the last minute, and I also had lost out on another one. Um, so... I was doing it again. It was $4 shipping, 50 cents each additional, and it was $1.99 starting price. And uh, there was probably between the six, five lots, there was 15 to 20 serial numbered cards, as low as 175 parallel cards and inserts and things like that. And I was hoping to get all those cheap, and somebody got, got me at the last minute. So just another example of how hot things are. A month ago, I probably could have won all those auctions for $1.99 and had no other competition. I'm seeing it on Red Sox cards, just nothing special for Red Sox cards. Parallel cards from the 2000s and two, you know, early 2010s that were getting five, six, seven, eight bids. And I'm like, this is stuff I used to be able to win for the starting bid. So um, right now it's a little discouraging as a bargain shopper and a buyer, but I'm gonna keep plugging. Um, my budget is a little bit strained because I've been working uh, I've been working overtime at work. That's usually my card budget is my overtime. So um, things have definitely been strained. But this this has made a nice little uh, side project for me, and I'm really enjoying it. I still am. And uh, eventually I'm hoping to find that big wad of two, 3,000 cards of the junk wax type stuff that I can just get a whole bunch of that stuff because I don't want to buy that stuff individually for 18 cents a card. I don't want to pay one, three, four cents a card for those, for those cards. So what I'm saying, junk wax... What I consider that would be like 1987 to probably 1993 is really the era which 
is really bad. 94, you started to have a little bit more premium stuff coming out. Even 93, you had SP, you had Pinnacle, you had Stadium Club in 91. I mean, that stuff now, Stadium Club, Pinnacle, that stuff is considered junk wax from 91 to 93. It really is. Uh, there's there's tons of them. Even 90 Leaf now has become kind of a, a laughing stock. Um, but yeah, then when you start hitting 94, 95 is when it starts to get a little bit more interesting. I've been buying a lot of stuff from like 97 to 2015, you know, even 2018, 2019. Um, a lot of insert cards uh, and just, I love the photography on some of these cards. The favorite card I think I've seen so far actually has two Hall of Famers on it. It's a 2019 Stadium Club Ricky Henderson card. If you get, I don't have it handy. It's out in the other room, but it's, the card shows, it's probably from like 1981, 1982 when he was with Oakland. And it shows him getting back to first base on a pickoff attempt. And Eddie Murray is the first baseman. And it's just such a cool image. I love the picture. I love those early 80s images. And that's one of the favorite cards that I've seen so far. And like I said, it's that the Oakland green and yellow jersey and Eddie Murray with his big afro under his hat. and Just a really cool card. And I'm, as I get these cards, I'm looking at them and I just love some of the photography on them. And they're just really cool. And this is this card is from 2019. They just did a really good job of capturing that image from the early 80s. So, um, yeah, so that's that's what I have tonight for a video. Um, I may... If, if I still can, I don't know if he's already closed the contest or not, but uh, another YouTuber, Jeez Mikey, has been doing a tabletop um, display contest in honor of his 600th subscriber. And I've seen a lot of my uh, fellow collectors have done a video, and I don't know if the deadline has come and gone or not yet, but I was thinking of maybe doing something with my new Hall of Famers, uh, just to try to get my name out there too. And, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, get some more subscribers because that's my ultimate goal. I want I want people to watch my content and be interested in my content and um, I always take suggestions from other people on uh, ways to do that. So that's what I have for tonight. I want to uh, thank everybody who's watching. Thank all my subscribers. Um, thank you to all my Facebook um, likes. Like I said, I just got my 450th like. So the next goal will be the big 500. Um, and then hopefully I can start getting some subscribers on YouTube as well. That's what I have for tonight. I promise I'll stop now. Everybody have a great night.